Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome. Uh, we are in Tracan's Teeth here on the P99 Green server during the Velius expansion. But when Kunar comes out, um, people are very, very interested in obtaining your Ixar Hide mask. And how you get that is by killing Harbinger Dronic. And to get him to spawn, we need to do the Forager cycle here in the zone. So, how do we do that? What are we looking for? Um, you know, what is the best way for a bard to possibly solo this? I actually died to the server first. And that really blew. <laughs> and also because well, I, I didn't know the tactics either. I did had I had no clue until I kind of understood the mob a little bit better, right? You always can kill them at a higher level, you know, on live or whatever. But uh, this is, you know, if you are you know below level sixty and uh, you don't have like songs like occlusion of sound and stuff like that uh, to debuff him just yet, um, it, it, it is possible because I, I I have done it. I did it at about level fifty six or so. Um, when I actually went back in and, and attempted to do the forager cycle itself. And the actual forager cycle is actually a pretty decent experience. So real quick, getting into this, um, the forager and Chicanon's teeth, right? Uh, if you go into the wiki page, you can see what spawns after killing the forager, right? So here, if you just go in, you can find the hunter and forager cycles. And by killing the forager repeatedly, you have the, you have the chance to have any one of these mobs spawn, um, which we want the Harbinger, right? We want Harbinger Dronic. He is a wizard, and he will blast the heck out of you. He killed me almost instantly when I did this, or attempted it long ago. And I actually died again after I got him to spawn. So, you know, it, it is no joke when, uh, if you don't have magic resist, you need the magic resist and, and possibly even cold uh, resist because he can one-shot you. We don't have that many. We don't have a lot of hit points to deal with. So cool. Also, if you're interested in the hunter cycle, these are the other ones that spawn after killing the hunter. Um, and I will show both of these on the map, just so if you're interested in your Sebelus key, all you got to do, you're going to do the same method that well, I'm going to show with the forager and apply it to the hunter. Easy day, you could pull these guys, you know, to the edges of the zone, kill them, do whatever, have them fight each other, uh, and super easy to get. So you get those two halves, turn them into the emperor down at the bottom and you're good to go. So here's a map right now. We are up here, right at Emerald Jungle. You can also come out here to Swamp of Hope. The river is a good checkpoint, and so is the lake. And we'll get into that in a second. Um, the forager, there's two areas of interest, right? The forager and the hunter are always up. These guys are unique because they are instant respawns, whether it is them or one of the named, right? They are placeholders for the named. Uh, not only do they drop the key, but they are the placeholders for the name. Cool. So there are two areas in which the forager himself can spawn. Um, and that is, one is on this 3000 access. So we'll come out and we'll scan this area with tracking about up to here or so. Um, and you'll see some huts and stuff. And you're usually on the inside. And he's up on this ridge. There's actually a ridge here that's elevated. And then you have the zone wall. So... This is where the forager will be, or he can be down here in the south. The south has a ton of mobs, all, all, all tracking through undead, casters, shamans, all that kind of stuff that will root you, they will dot you, and uh, it takes a little bit of skill to, to, to swing around here. The lower level you are, the bigger your aggro radius, because some of these guys can still see in viz, uh, even if they're not undead. So uh, forager will also be down here and then real quick to show the hunter he can spawn in two places as well if you're interested in that he can spawn in this top area so h4 hunter cool and then he can also spawn down here in this area as well so hunter can also be down here so if you're interested in you know tagging both or something and you know just be cognizant that one might be down here and whatnot and we'll get into how to how to find that a little bit later i think the note is i'm going to get into it when you pull the forager on this side uh, I use reverse kiting, which I'll show you in a moment. And how we and how I do that is I pull, always pull, e even if you're just going to dot kite or something, I always pull to the wall. Always pull to the wall. There's no mobs that path along the wall. There's some get kind of close, whatnot, but you are very safe along any of these walls. So if you're going to pull south, I always pull to the south wall. Um, all along here is perfectly fine. And I've actually killed Dronic here, and I've, you know, even over here. I think Dronic himself spawns in the south. I've never seen him on the on the on this northwest side. But uh, so these are the areas of interest, and we're gonna get into that in a moment. Um, 
So I do reverse kiting. Again, you can do this in many different ways. Uh, when it comes to Dronic himself, to the Harbinger, Big Daddy, Big Daddy Dronic, uh, you're going to want to keep him feared. That dude, is, he can hit hard, and uh, those and his casting is is relentless. He will he will nuke you very quickly. Many people die all the time uh, to this guy. So I'm going to have my map up here on my end parse. I'll keep it updated and showing you where I go. Uh, so first off, when you come in, you know, it's always good to charm a mob, and I have a list of hotkeys that I have made back here. <clears throat> one is for hunter, one is for forager, and how this works is we'll, I will do pet tracking to ensure that the forager is even up. So uh, this this uh, macro or hotkey is pet attack froglock underscore forager. And so when you con a mob, or sorry, not con a mob, but charm a mob, Right, such as this shaman. A cool thing about charming something with a pet is that when you charm them, the pet will disappear. Bam, you can't have double pets. But I'll come over here, click this, and it says attacking froglock forager master. That means that it is up. Right, I do have a bunch of named here of interest, like Dronic himself, right? I can click those all the same way. You get you need their full name with underscores. And uh, that will ensure that he that they are up. So after after you know that then we can go and, and search for them. And we're just going to do that by simple tracking. And uh, actually, I'm just going to charm this dude. Sit down, bro. And we'll get into the different areas. All right, so right now, another good thing to do is, after you clear that aggro, um, you come in and you know kind of check and see who is in the zone, what's happening. You can tell who is usually kiting or farming these cycles. And typically, it usually is the forager. I don't know many that you know hunt, that uh, do the hunter cycle, but uh, but always be you know kind of respectful. Ask around, do do a cam check and whatnot. Um, I've already done that, and so all right now um, I'm starting at the top of the river here. Uh, I've already been kind of tracking, and so we're going to come down that 3,000 axis. You can see that the lake is on. It's on the side. It is getting a little bit darker, so dark elf illusion is also good. Or if you have the loot of the howler, it's also preferred. But uh, also, um, the ridge line separates the wall over here. And on the map, you can kind of see where I am. Um, uh, separates the lake from the from the zone wall. So all I'm going to do is, is follow this ridge. So if I kind of look over, right again, well, you can't really see it now. But the uh, lake is right, right past these trees. And then oh, the zone wall is right here. So I'm just going to run along this ridge and check. Um, it is not currently up, so I'm just going to continue down. So you can watch. I'm going to go and continue down to that south wall, and then I'm going to kind of stay to the uh, to the left of that, and then swing around east and then back up uh, to check that area. So that is all I'm going to do real quick, and just tracking all the way all the way down. So by him not being on that, you know, in the northwest area, that just kind of it kind of tells me she should be down here in the south. And there's the hunters down here. So I'm still continuing down along the south. There's also a ridge line, and then the ridge line right here separates, you know, the main area from the wall, from the south wall right here. And this is where I will pull uh, this particular forager. And, and any other name that we might get. All right, we got him on track. So kind of out here, also playing keep away. You can see all the all the different mobs out here. Um, let's see, he is ahead to the left. There he is. And all I'll do is because they are on they are on a different faction than these other frogs. So you can pull just him. Um, without aggroing other frogs. Same with the hunter. So those two are on their own faction. So if you pull the hunter near the forager or vice versa, then uh, they will aggro each other, but they will not aggro other frogs. Uh, pulling, you know, the knights or whatever will aggro those. So just be mindful. So here he is. I tagged him. I'm pulling him right to the wall. Here he is now. And uh, up minus the trees. I'm just kind of showing you he is there. And then I've already switched out to my primary weapon. I'll snare him. And then I'll usually start fear. And there we go. Get it going again. This is all I'm going to do. 
And I'm using two dots. So I am using Settler's Constant Chain because that is the slowest uh, snare song that we have. It's your lowest level one, but that provides the most snare effect. So that's all that's all we want. Um, and then English's Appalling Screech at level 26. That's the one I am using here. You'll see him go through trees and stuff, but you just keep them, just keep at it, keep them fear. This guy does hit hard, and if you get adds, you can charm the forager uh, to kill those adds. I would, I would recommend doing that, and then you can snare and fear the add, and it will go down pretty, pretty quickly um, by having the forager charmed first. Uh, if you get any adds that have a pet, then I would charm that first in order to get rid of the pet, or, or whatever you want really. Um, and then when that one breaks, then switch back to the forager, then, and then simply snare fear the add. So as you can see, I'm down here on the map, just right down um, at, at the wall. And there's nothing that will path un until like very high up along this ridge all the way down. There's some there. So kind of like midway, but I've never had an actual add by pulling it. If he, if he does get too far, simply just let the fear wear off and then just pull him right back as, as tight as you can to that to, to any wall, really. And there you go. You get your uh, medallion if you need it. If not, then you're good to go. So now that I killed him, I just go right back out. I have cellos on. Cellos on a travel. And watching out for the undead. And I'll kind of just come back around. I'm actually more so following my map now than any other than any kind of, any other kind of landmark. And having J boots uh, or uh, some form of spear of the wolf or something else in the backup definitely helps as well. Uh, it's just uh, and uh, and levitate. So if you have your Pegasus Feather Cloak, that is another really useful tool here uh, to get around in case Cellos does come off, because you will inevitably get an ad, and these guys um, will try to get you. Also, one thing I wanted to show is if I can find a okay, there's a shaman here. I'm going to purposely aggro this shaman and show you something rather something kind of cool. So if I did come over and I petchak again, let's say that you couldn't just find you couldn't find the hunter at all. And you're like, "Man, where is this guy?" So I come over here. And I'm like, "Man, where is this guy at? The forager is up." So I'm just going to have him sit and then I'm going to run away. Bam. And so you can actually outrun these mobs. And I'm just going to run because I know that he's probably back in the northern part. Um, so I'm just going to run back up here. And yeah, I'm actually leashing the mob. Um, he will fall behind and he will no longer chase me. So I can pet track it either at either side. Uh, whether north running to the south or south running back up to the north. Um, with a mob. Um. And they will most likely leash off you as long as you're using a drum or something like that. You'll definitely outrun them and then you'll be good to go. So you don't have to zone every single time. So here's a forager here. He's actually behind me. So I'm just at the bottom south here. He's way up here. Bam, forager. All right. So all I'm doing is aggroing, just turning right around, and I'm coming over here to the wall, since that's the closest to me over here. And this is all, you, all you're all you going to do is rinse and repeat over and over, killing this forager. Um, actually, this is not a good area. He will run, he will walk into these rocks, and that can be kind of annoying. So I'm actually just going to pull him. There he is. Right down here a bit. And this should help. So let's say that you did get an add. Let's say that this warrior added on me. And uh, well, all I would do... All 
All right, so now I have both of them. So now I would I would get the forager, charm him. Here we go, and he is already knocking them. Let's get that charm in. Then we'll get that fear. So you can see that this guy is dying really quickly. You can usually get him down in the first cycle of charm. So there you go. And then just have him sit. Come over here. Oh, he already broke. That's okay. And then just rinse and repeat right back into our fear cycle. So pretty cool. And uh, this is pretty much it. So in these same areas, uh, I would have just kept going north, going north until I found him. Uh, if you're still not finding him, pet track to ensure that he's still up again. Because sometimes you get you know different named. I don't have a hockey fee for every single named. Um, and sometimes they kind of go in these weird little areas. And sometimes it, does, it just takes a while, right? Because bar track is a little bit shorter. Um, and sometimes you hit it just right to where you miss them every single time. <laughs> I don't know how, but uh, that's just kind of how I do it. So regardless if you do this fear kiting or not, um, you can do this any way you want. But again, always kind of check around to check the zone. Make sure, you know, hey, sometimes people like to, like to snipe him because, again, he's not in a single spawn point. So technically, the whole camping is uh, kind of out the window in a way. But, you know, it's respecting each other. We know who's doing what. We know how these cycles work by now. At least most of us do. Um, if people need the key, by by more you know more than by uh, more than happy to pull this guy. I'll pull this guy from the south all the way up to north, and I'll also tag the hunter too, and so we get both in one go. Um, and you can pull. I pulled him clear across the zone all the way up to um, Emerald Jungle and all that. But uh, pretty cool. Um, and this is it. This is all you will do. So both areas, so it's kind of good to see at least the, the two areas. But uh, the, the, this frog here where I'm at now, he will not path down south. He will stay in this northern area. And the south and the southern one will stay in the southern area. And only one can be up at a time. And uh, that is it. And so every so often, you know, I just loot pretty much the money. They don't, they don't really drop much else. Um, and I'm right back into the fight. There he is again. Already respawned. And that's all I would do. Just rinse and repeat. Um, tag them. Find them. Just kind of tag them. You can kind of body aggro them too. They, they, they typically see invis. Sometimes they don't. Uh, but that is how you pull the frog, uh, the frog lock forager to both of the sides. All right. So we have Big Daddy Harbinger Dronic up. Uh, I actually recorded this and my mute was on. <laughs> so all my talking I didn't get. But anyway, so I had to re-log three times. I kept getting ads on this pull. So uh, I don't know what it was, but I just gave up. And because people are after it, right? Magically, there's no one in the zone until this guy spawns. And then all of a sudden, people are there and they are trying to get him. So anyways, I just had to go for it with the ad. And so as you can see right now, all I am doing is using Snare, Fear. Uh, I, I did get Occlusion on and... Uh, Fufu's curtailing chant to get you know that MR debuffed. Um, he does have a damage absorb at first, and then and also a damage shield, which will wear off here in a bit. Um, with the add, all I was really doing, I I did charming at first, but then I was just like, well, I could just fear it away, and that'll give me some time. So that is what I did. I was going to high sun it here, uh, but it was already getting dark and it wasn't uh, going to work. So. I was going to high sun the ad, but, uh, yeah, I just kept at it, get the Tash on, I am using the Orb of Tashane, so that got on, and then, um, I was able to switch it out, and then, uh, I figured I might need some healing, because in case he does break fear, I wanted to switch out to my Singing Still Breastplate and start healing in between, so I felt I was safe enough. I was surprised that I did not get a bunch of resist as i did last time last time was just resist 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 and that's what got me killed rather quickly granted yes i do have the extra debuffs but even with um you know i already had him fear before i even used those debuffs uh and the orbit of shane if of course if you don't have it um then of course you won't have it but uh but that is also a really good one to have last time i didn't have that either um so just some uh, good things here. This was about a five and a half minute 
you know, kill to get him all the way down. And uh, I think overall, really not that much damage taken. Most of the damage is from the add and, uh, and from the damage shield. So I was kind of able to negate the damage shield with my uh, Singing Steel Breastplate. Which if I didn't have that, then I would definitely be using uh, Cantata or Nivs or even both, right? Uh, to get him down, or to get myself healed up. And that is really it. I'm down, as you can see on the map, I'm, I am down on the uh, south wall area. Kind of near the ghost city where the emperor is. But uh, yeah, I was just uh, fearing the ad. And that is and that was pretty much it. He really he never got a spell off that I that I could tell. And uh, good day. So I mean, yeah, we spent a lot of hours here. Also, shout out to uh, Mr. Karloff. Uh, he was also farming it. He's also trying to farm this. Um, and just kind of on and off for the past few days, trying to get this guy to spawn. He's a pain in the butt. So. I'm not kidding. When there's a ton of foragers, it's nonstop. I think I averaged about two minutes or so per forager, not including the pole, so maybe about three um, of just nonstop killing the forager whenever I could, and then uh, and just be ready. Always check the zone because people, you know, these camps are they're not you're not camping a single spawn point. So is it open and fair to everyone? Well, technically yes, um, but people should recognize, especially at this late in the game. People should recognize, yes, he's up because people are, are farming it. Uh, if there's actually no one else in the zone, then, yeah, definitely free game. Uh, but unless it's a server reset or something, you, you know, you know, it's just being respectful. You know who's trying to kill it. They spent hours most likely trying to get this guy to spawn um, and all of that. So continuing with, with the fight and... Uh, Yep, just trying to get him uh, the add charm now. I was like, all right, he's he's, right, I'm doing good on health. And uh, yeah, I got him stuck in a tree for a bit. And then all you would do in this situation is just stop snaring and just keep him feared. Keep him feared. Um, and that's pretty much it. So just fear and heal, and then he will walk out. There he goes. And keeping him feared all the way down. Don't let him break. Don't let him do anything. I don't know if he will even try to gate or not. I've never seen that. But I know from experiences with like mobs like Nezekazina and whatnot... I do not let it go. Do not do not stop fearing or snaring. I just don't want him walking anywhere for any possible ad at all. But, uh, yeah, this is it. This is the, the solo kill. So there you go. Eye on the prize. Get that Ixar hide mask for that Ixar illusion. Awesome stuff. And I actually didn't have room, so I had to make room in my bags <laughs> to be able to loot it. And then I'll just take care of this ad. All right, so let's put this bad boy on. So you can look like a cool XR man. There you go. And if you want some fashion quests, here here's what it looks like with the guardian robe on. So if you're interested in getting the guardian robe, bam, fashion quest at the ultimate. Um, you can get that from uh, Sky Shrine. I have do have a guide on that on how to obtain it. Just a, a walkthrough of what to kill to get it. Um, so pretty cool. Uh, even further enhanced with a crazy looking death mask. Um, it's cowl of mortality there. But uh, yeah, go all out on that fashion quest and there you go. Looks pretty, pretty sweet. So good luck to you. Hope the RNG gods are in your favor. And we'll see you next time.